Okay, super friends, show of hands. Who tuned in last night to watch the Sci-Fi Network's brand new television series called Krypton? I know I did. Here are my thoughts and a spoiler review. So if you don't want to get any spoilers on the first episode, then you might not want to watch this video right now. Now the setting for the show Krypton actually takes place in the city of Kandor. And the city's been divided into guilds, which is much like the comic books. And it has this medieval yet technologically advanced feel to it. And I think that the show does a really good job of, of mixing the two together for us as the audience. Some guilds are higher up on the social power totem, while others are not quite so high. Still, other people don't even have a rank or guild. They're the people on the very bottom. Now, it is a pretty ballsy endeavor to try and build a show around characters that the general public has absolutely no knowledge of based on the popularity of a character that likely will never be in the show that everyone does know. That's a ballsy move if you ask me. Don't worry, they do a really good job of putting the Superman symbol, that House of L crest insignia, kind of everywhere. It's in the show constantly. Not to mention, Adam Strange shows up with Superman's cape. But we'll get into that in a second. So the story begins, as we're introduced to it, that the House of L, Val L, who is a scientist from the Science Guild, has gone before the High Council of Krypton, and he's trying to warn them, we're not alone in the universe, and we're in danger. But the High Council is here in none of it. They really just don't want to believe that there is anyone else in the universe, and that he needs to bow to Rao. He's a scientist. He ain't bound to nobody, and he knows what he knows. Krypton's in danger, and they're not alone in the world, and so he will not recant. And for this, they sentence him to death. Now this is significant because it was Jor-El who discovered the Phantom Zone. So the Phantom Zone hadn't been discovered yet. So Val-El was simply sentenced to death. And the rest of his family had their rank stripped from them and they were no longer in any guilds. This was very bad for the House of El. They have been shunned. So yeah, Val-El gets sentenced to death right in front of his whole family and the star of the show, which is his grandson, Seg-El. He's the one that we follow around and he basically fulfills the Superman kind of role in the show. No powers, but he's supposed to be the guy that we follow his journey. His is the main story. The next we see him, it's years later, and he's living in squalor comparatively to the people above him and he's taking part in gambling bar brawls just to get by. Clearly the House of El is in dire straits at this point in their existence. Next we catch up with the House of Zod, Jaina, and Netta, and they're both part of the security forces for the planet Krypton. And Jaina, which is the mother, the leader of the forces, is pretty much every bit as ruthless as General Zod. She goes as far as to stab her own daughter in the hand to give the illustration of no mercy. Never give mercy. Now at one point in the show, Seg actually manages to prevent a bomber from killing everybody in the Kryptonian Council, and because of this, they're thankful to him, and they need to tame him anyway. Like, he really is a loose cannon, and so they want to bring him up out of the slums and allow him to bond, which is the Kryptonian way of having children, have his rank back, and also be married. Only this is kind of an arranged marriage, and he's not going to be an L when he gets his rank back. It's a completely different name. This is bad. Now, why is it bad? Well, we also find out that Netta and Seg are romantically entangled with each other. They're love interests. I find this really interesting and a really cool way to kind of push the story forward and keep us guessing because we know that the House of El and the House of Zod don't get along. The House of Zod has sworn to destroy the House of El for what Jor-El did, imprisoning the General in the Phantom Zone. And yet, here we have an El and a Zod romantically entangled with each other. It's gonna be interesting. Next, we're introduced to Adam Strange, who looks absolutely nothing like you would expect him to look like from the comic books, at least as of yet. He's got a hoodie and a baseball cap with Detroit on the front, and he brings a very important message and a greenish-blue glowing sunstone key to the fortress, and he tells Seg, find the fortress. Seg doesn't know nothing about no fortress. He goes home, he shows his parents the key, and his parents are like, uh, yeah, we don't know what you're talking about here. Give us this key. Let us hold on to this for you. They're unsure, because he doesn't know about it, and they don't think he's ready to. But meanwhile, he just steals the key back from him again and buggers off out. 
He gets caught with the key, which is really terrible, but his mom shows up in the nick of time and grabs him up with a ship thing, evades the guards, flies off out to the fortress because she knows exactly where it is, shines her big old light from the front of the ship on it, and there it is, the crest of the House of El, the key works, they go on inside, and there it is, Val El's Fortress of Solitude. Woo! Seg has his own personal fortress. It looks remarkably like the comic books too. You've got the statues with the globe in the middle. It really does give you that whole Fortress of Solitude from the comic books feel, only it's darker much darker and, and medieval looking. Now tragically, because Seg's mom helps him to get away and go find the fortress, she is then caught, arrested, brought before the council, and they're going to execute her, but they're looking for that other person that was with her, because Bioscan showed two people and she doesn't want to be like, yeah, it was my son Seg, kill him too. So Seg's dad jumps in and he's like, yeah, it was me. And so Seg's mom gets killed by Jaina, the mother of his love interest, and then Seg's pappy gets killed by Jaina, the mother of his love interest. Things just got hella complicated right now. Next we see Seg, newly motivated by the death of his parents right in front of him at the hands of Zod and the rest of the Kryptonian Council, hightails it out to the newly found fortress and he runs into Adam Strange again who is waiting for him there. He thinks that it's Adam Strange's fault at first that his parents are dead and gives him a sock in the mouth until Adam Strange explains to him, no, no, this is much bigger than you or I. Not only does the fate of your planet depend on you, but the entire universe. There is a threat coming that is so big, it is the destroyer of worlds. He takes their technology and bottles up a city and then destroys the planet. And he goes from world to world to world doing this. That's why he's known as the destroyer of worlds. And we have a limited amount of time to do this. And you have to save your great, great, great grandson, Kal-El. In a nutshell, if he doesn't do his bit, not only will the entire universe be in danger, but there will be no Superman. And he leaves him Superman's cape, the familiar red and yellow cape, as kind of like an hourglass. The cape is dissolving at the tips. And once the cape has completely dissolved, time's out. Superman will have never been, and Brainiac will be free to run the galaxy, doing whatever he wants, to whomever he wants. The destroyer of worlds. The collector of worlds. We get that glimpse of Brainiac. I'm sorry. I love him. I think he's great. I think he looks like a modern science fiction -y take on that old classic 50s and 60s Brainiac. I love him. Overall, I think this was a super solid start to the show. I loved it. It, for one, it's distinguishable right away from anything on the CW. It's its own thing. It looks like a science fiction show. It feels like a science fiction show. And it feels like they're really going to be telling a large, important, overarching story. I think they're going to respect previous incarnations of Superman while doing something new. That's kind of why I wasn't a really big fan of Smallville. I love Superman, but they just did so many things so different that I know that you really just should let it be what it is. I just couldn't. And I also don't watch Gotham for that reason. They're good shows, they're just not my cup of tea as a DC fan. This one, however, I loved it. And if you haven't seen it yet and you watched this review, why? It's got spoilers now erected for you. But if you have seen it, let me know down in the comments section below what you thought of the show. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you think that they have strayed maybe too far away from current Superman mythos and telling this whole new story is just going to turn people off? Do you like the characters they've introduced to us and the various plot devices that they've brought forward in this show? And finally, what do you think about the whole look and feel of the show? Do you think it was a good move to make the show look half science fiction and half medieval rather than going with a complete science fiction-y futuristic looking city and planet? I'm just interested to know what you think. Let me know down in the comments below because I'm going to read absolutely every single comment that you leave. Also, if you like this video, slap a like on it so I know that you like it and you've enjoyed it. And if I spoiled it for you and you watched this far, you shouldn't have watched this far. You should have clicked off when I told you to in the first place. And finally, if you're new to this channel and you want to see more of the kind of thing that I upload to YouTube on a pretty regular basis, just hit the subscribe button. Remember to ding the bell so that you never miss a video. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care, super friends. Have an awesome day.